What's up, buff dudes and girls? We're here at the gym and we have a full body dumbbell only workout in plan. Now this is day one of three days in our first phase of our dumbbell only program that we have recently come out with. And uh, before starting any workout, I'd like to do a little bit of mobility. And uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. It's a uh, full body, like I said before. So we're gonna do kind of a full body mobility. And I just really like to start with pass-throughs. If you've seen a lot of our videos before, it's a pretty simple exercise. I just got a band here and you really just bring it through up and over. And it really just gets that shoulder mobility, but can also, uh, a really great mobility for the hips is gonna be the full squat. Now the first exercise of this workout is gonna be the goblet squat. So you're already gonna get into the full squat position uh, with the first exercise, but to open the hips up, it's always good to kind of get in that position anyways. So if you have a hard time kind of bringing your body all the way down, what you're gonna do is just kind of get comfortable in this position and your arms are gonna lay inside your legs here and you're gonna slightly push outward on your knees and you're trying to get that torso as vertical as possible. And at that, as you push out slightly, you're gonna tell a little bit of stretch in the adductors right there in your kind of inner thigh and that's good because it's kind of helped open it up. And you can hold the position for about 10 to 15 seconds or so and once you kind of count that out, you can get back to the top position, kind of let you rest a little bit and then uh, once you kind of uh, feel a little bit better, you can go right back into that position again, drop down, kind of sit into it, kind of push out. You can kind of move around too. So this good thing about mobility is you don't just have to hold in one position, like let's say a static stretch. You can also kind of manipulate and move yourself in certain directions. And if a certain place feels tight, you can hold that position and just try to work out that tightness a little bit. So that's a really simple, um, kind of mobility exercise specifically for the lower body here. And there's also others too. Uh, you can do the lateral lunges here and you'll feel another stretch in that inside of the thigh there. And you, what, what you wanna do is try to keep those toes pointed forward at all times because what happens is you're actually working on ankle mobility too in the same time. So what happens if you notice as you're squatting down to one side, your toe is pointing outward, that shows that you have pretty poor mobility in your ankles. So what you have to do is really concentrate on keeping those toes pointed forward. So as you do this, it's working on that ankle mobility too, along with your hip mobility as well. Um, so, that being said, we're gonna move on to the actual workout itself. So you get your five minutes of warm up in the jump rope in the program, as you can see. And then also it gets you about 10 or so minutes of mobility work done just to warm you up and get you ready. This is the beginner's phase of the dumbbell only program to kind of get you started, to get you ready. Not everyone is that advanced. So they wanna kind of like start a little bit slower, get used to it and full body is a, is a perfect way to do that along with keeping the weights a little bit lighter. Um, so we're gonna start off with a goblet squat. Now this is gonna be three sets of 10 repetitions in this workout, or in this full phase, I should say, because each day has the same uh, set and rep um, ranges. So we got the dumbbell now with the goblet squat. So we're gonna be taking as a stance in like a normal squat. Um, so it's a little outside of hip width here and your toes are slightly pointed out in a comfortable position. Some people say around 12 degrees out or it's not super specific as long as it's comfortable as long as your knees are following in line with your toes. Now with the dumbbell, if it is a little bit heavier, um, I like to tend to get in that position first. So you're down in the squat position and then you can be grabbing the dumbbells and slightly curling it up to position right here. And then now with the dumbbells, as you can see, is placed right under your chin and it's resting right on the palms there. So it should be pretty comfortable. And now, as you can tell right now, it's like in that first mobility exercise, the full squat. So it feels pretty good. The weight is pushing you down. And since you're counterbalanced here with the weight being forward, you can actually push your hips in um, and forward and then you can have a bit more vertical torso. So with this exercise, it's really good to get used to the squat position and get comfortable with it. So once you're in this position, ready to go, you're just gonna press straight up, just like so, and then right back down to that full squat position. And you can just sit in it if, if you want, just a little bit, just to get that nice feel for it, and then push straight up again. And there you go, you got the squat. So as you can tell, it's a pretty simple movement, although there is a few things to keep in mind, which is gonna be knees falling in line with the toes, a bit more of a vertical torso, neutral chin, and keeping that dumbbell tight to the body. So when it's tight to the body, um, it's not gonna be pulling away from you as much. You can actually balance it a little bit better. And at that top position, what you can do is just gently push those hips forward and really try to engage the glutes. And that way, you're gonna get that nice squeeze and activation in that hip area too, to get the full benefit. But we got the first set done, as you can tell. We got two more sets of 10 reps, and then we're moving on to the next exercise. So we got legs out of the way. So now that is one of the biggest muscle groups in the body, and we're moving on to the second biggest, which is gonna be the back. And with this is gonna be the bent over rows. Now we're sticking within that three sets of 10 repetition scheme here, 
So thankfully it's gonna be a little easy to track when you're actually doing the exercise. You don't have to think about it too much. It's just three by 10. So we got the dumbbells here and we're not going too heavy because with these you wanna really try as hard as you can, depending on your flexibility and mobility, um, to get your torso um, pretty much horizontal to the, uh, the floor here. So that way it is gonna get you in the proper position to row those dumbbells straight up there. Now with this, there's a couple ways you can do the dumbbell rows or the bent over rows, is you can do a wider row here, and as you can tell, your elbows are flaring outside the body here, or you can bring it inward. And you can tell here where now the elbows are running close to the body. Now some of the differences are with those different positions here is with the close, you can feel a bit more activation than lats. And when you kind of bring your elbows wider, all of a sudden it's switching up a little bit more, where you feel a little bit more tension in the upper back area. The traps, uh, the terrace major, uh, and also the rear delts and things like that. Now the lats are still getting some benefits, and just be aware of that. So this one, thankfully, is pretty easy to switch depending on your goals or what you're, where you want kind of the um, activation in. So I'll go a bit wider in my grip here. So flare your elbows out, and really pull those elbows high, and squeeze those shoulder blades together at the top position. So what you don't wanna do is get too much bend in your lower back area, the lumbar area. You can get some slight flexion in the thoracic area, which is more of that middle back area, because that's gonna be more of the mobile, uh, mobile part of your spine. But you try to keep it as straight and rigid as possible. Try to keep a neutral chin and also a nice tempo too. Try not to jerk the weight up. And as you can tell, my feet were just about hip width. You can always bring them closer if you want. So what happens in your feet is the wider you go out, the more stable you'll be. So just think of the pyramids. They built a very wide base for a reason because it creates that perfect stable positioning of a structure. Um, so the wider you go in your feet, stance, more stable you are. The narrower you go, the more kind of stability muscles you have to use to balance your position. So it kind of depends on you. It can be a little bit more easier or advanced. Um, we're gonna get two more sets of the bent over row to hit some back attack and then we'll move on to the next exercise. Legs are done, back's done. It's on to the next biggest muscle group was gonna be the chest, the front shield, baby. And we're gonna be doing some standard bench presses. So nothing too fancy about this. Of course, it's gonna be using the dumbbell. And uh, you know, a few things as reminders if you're doing bench presses, uh, is a, a common term we like to use is retractus scapula, but essentially it's just pulling your shoulder blades together. It's bringing that chest up. You wanna lay flat on the bench, uh, your feet flat on the floor. Kind of bring those shoulders down, elbows a bit tighter to the body, which you're gonna see me doing here in a second and it puts that shoulder in a bit more of a comfortable position for the pressing motion. So, here we go. As you can tell when I bring them down to you're getting a pretty good stretch in the chest. And so right in kind of the dumbbells in the armpit area, and then from that position, that stretch position, you're pushing straight up and bringing the dumbbells together. So it is allowing for a little bit extra motion in there. So with the standard barbell, it's in a fixed position. You're just pressing kind of straight up and straight down. There's no real, um, alternate movements in there. But with dumbbells, you can go wide, feel the stretch, and then as you press up, bring them together and feel a little bit more activation in the chest that way. So that's one good thing about the dumbbells. Uh, we had a video on uh, dumbbells versus barbell and kind of some of the benefits and differences in there. And that was one of them. Barbell being a fixed position where dumbbells independently from each other. And also you can add in extra movements there, which is really nice. Oh yeah. Standing shoulder press. What's it working? Well, it's working the shoulders, right in the name, of course. It's pretty obvious, but some of the differences you can do in a shoulder press is one, the one we're doing is standing. So standing is we're gonna require you to engage your core. It's gonna require a bit more stabilization in there because as you press up, your center of gravity is raising with the weight. And once it gets in that top position, you're gonna feel pretty unstable there. You're really gonna have to activate that core. So a couple ways to help you with this, if you are kind of new to this exercise is, as we were saying before, widen your stance. So just imagine yourself as like a pyramid. So once the stance is nice and wide, you'll feel more stable. But what you wanna do is really try to lock your knees out and flex your glutes. So if you flex your glutes and your legs, that's gonna feel more stable, just like that. In that position, you're gonna press straight up and uh, it's gonna feel nice and strong. If you wanna make it a bit more difficult, you just narrow your stance here. Because then all of a sudden, your base of support is smaller. You're gonna have to really concentrate on your balance. So once you get in that top position and your uh, center of gravity is raised up, you're gonna feel I guess you can almost want to topple over a bit, but that's going to stress your core and stress the stabilizer muscles to help you with the exercise. 
But if this is uh, kind of a beginning um, program for you, if it's kind of the first time you've been doing these exercises, or you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself in the beginning, uh, what you want to do is a seated press. Now this takes a little bit of that stabilization out of it. Your core still has to be activated, but not quite as much. And uh, you're gonna feel a little bit more grounded in the seated position. So there's kind of stages that you can do in this exercise, which is really nice, which is tends to be in most exercises, but this one in particular that we're doing. So there's always kind of an option for you to make it a little bit easier if you're struggling with it, or a bit more difficult. But I would always tend to try to stress yourself, to make it a bit more difficult, because if you push yourself in that way, you're only gonna get better and the body's gonna wanna adapt. And that's what it's all about. And that's why we also do this program in phases. So that way it starts a bit easier and it progressively gets harder and harder. So that way it is always activating that adaptation process in the body and you're always seeing the results. So we can't forget about abs and the last exercise is going to be working on the core really, but you are definitely gonna be feeling it in your abdominals. Um, now we're gonna be doing some rollouts here and we're gonna be doing with them uh, with dumbbells. Now this is a pretty um, simple yet difficult exercise. It's simple and the mechanics of it, but it can be difficult because it puts you in a position where you really have to engage your core and it also stresses the lower back too. So in the core it's gonna be your abdominals and, the, and your lower back as well, which is kind of the erector spinae muscles that run along the spine to help stabilize it in a position where it's slightly compromised. Um, so you can see we got the dumbbells on the ground here. Now you can use a ab roller wheel if you have one, that's pretty simple. But we're just gonna be using this because it is the dumbbell only program and we wanna show that it all can be done with only dumbbells here. So if you have in this position, pretty standard, just right on your knees. And as you push the dumbbells out, you're gonna be extending in the hips and you're gonna be hitting a plank position just like so. And then you gonna be rolling back in to the beginning position. So as you reach this position here, the core is gonna have to really tighten up and then you're gonna be pulling yourself back to that top position there. So back down, just like so. Now, if this is a little bit too difficult for you, what you can do is just limit your range of motion. So you just bring it out till your core feels kind of tight and then bring it back to the top position there. So you don't necessarily have to go all the way down to the floor and then back up. Limiting the range of motion, you'll still feel a bit of the benefit of the exercise. And what you do is over time, just lengthen your range of motion to put more stress on the core to stabilize and then back to that top position. So much like we were saying before, stressing the adaptation process to make sure you're receiving all the benefits. Whew, oh yeah, feeling it. So you got two more sets and that completes the first day of the three day beginner dumbbell only program here. And this is the first phase. There are four phases all three weeks long. It's always a benefit and very useful to be on a, uh, on a program that tells you what to do. It's really gonna keep you accountable. You're gonna be forced to push yourself a little bit harder. And uh, we always like to contain a beginner phase in all of our programs, because we know not everyone is an advanced lifter. Sometimes when you be put on an advanced program right away, it requires you to come to the gym four days a week, five days a week, It'd be a little bit difficult mentally and physically. So it's good to kind of ramp up slowly into the more advanced stages there. But the good thing, is you, if you're already an advanced lifter, if you need to be pushed a little bit harder, you can always skip the beginner phase and go right on to the more advanced phases. So thanks for joining us for today's video and stay tuned for the next uh, days of this phase and I will see you next time. And as always, stay buff.